I ran up and down the station platform in my new shoes. My mother and father were watching me, holding hands and laughing, and I knew I was safe. The train was full of soldiers. My mother and father sat on boxes in the luggage compartment, and I sat on my mother's knee. It got very hot, and I cried. I didn't know I was tired. There was an empty pram in the luggage car. My mother tried to put me into it to sleep, but it smelt strange to me. Anyway, I was too big for a pram, and it had a label on it. Someone might come and wheel me away. I cried louder. My mother kept telling me I was tired. She didn't know that I was afraid that if I fell asleep, I would never see her or my father again. I don't remember getting on the boat, but then there was only me and my mother. My father was no longer with us. I wanted him to be there, but my mother said he had to go back to work laying telephone cables. We were in a big square room with seats and benches round the side. It didn't look like a boat. We had a seat, but many people were standing. A table in the middle of the floor was piled with cases and bags. And then the floor began to move. It swayed from side to side and the people who were standing put their arms out and tried to hold on to anything they could grab. An old man sitting beside us swore, damn it, we're in for a rough crossing. Packed like sardines in this bloody tin can. It's a damnable night. A man with a glass in his hand staggered above us and spilt most of his drink. Luckily, it only splashed my mother's shoes. He said, I'm very sorry, ma'am. And my mother said, it can't be helped. But I knew those were her good shoes, the ones with the gold buckles and high heels that she only wore when she was going out someplace special. There were more soldiers in the room and they were singing. Roll out the barrel, we'll have a barrel of fun. I liked it, but my mother frowned and said they were noisy men and I should try to sleep. I thought people sang when they were happy. But my mother said the men would be going back to fight in the war soon. I didn't know why that would make them happy. I knew the war was far away, but sometimes when the planes came over, we had to get up in the middle of the night and go to the shelter. It was a room under the ground and I didn't like it. We always had to hurry and sometimes didn't have time to dress properly. People wore coats over their pyjamas and slippers instead of shoes. Some of the women had curlers in their hair and everyone had blankets. Down in the big room, people sang like these soldiers and passed round sugary tea with milk in it, poured from teapots big as kettles. I knew there were bombs up there and if the one of them hit you, it would kill you. But my father and mother wouldn't let them hit me. That's why we were going home to Ireland because of the bombs. The floor tilted even more. I was glad we were sitting down and the luggage on the table moved. Some cases slid onto the floor and burst open, spilling all the clothes out among the soldiers' feet. One of the soldiers picked up a pink petticoat and danced round, holding it in front of him, singing, Underneath the lamplight, by the barricade, Darling, I remember, it was there I used to wait. Everyone was laughing. But I was glad our case was safe below the bench we were sitting on. The woman who owned the pink petticoat didn't go to get it. Maybe she was sick. Lots of people were sick and I felt my stomach moving up and down. But then I must have gone to sleep. For, for when I woke up again, Everyone was gathering up cases and moving in a crowd towards the door. We had to walk across the water on a kind of wooden bridge to get off the boat. And I didn't like that. The water was black and greasy and I held on tightly to my mother's hand. 
The man who had spilt his drink on us helped my mother carry our cases. When he bent down to lift them, he smelled of the beer my father sometimes drank. My mother said, thank you, she could manage. But he said he would take them down the gangplank all the same. And I think she was glad, because then she smiled at him and wished him good luck. There might have been a bus journey, but I was too tired to know. And then we were in my grandfather's house with my mother's sisters. And there were fires and food and a soft bed with fresh smelling sheets. And that was how we came home.